What you talking about, Willis? Guess what? The 80s called, and they want their magic book back. Hey, gang, Jeff Stone here with day 24 of the year 2016 at magicreview.com. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, the 80s did call, and they do want their magic book back. And I sent it back, and it came back in a DeLorean, and now I'm stuck in some weird space-time continuum where I have two copies of the book. I don't know what to do with it. Maybe I'll give one away. Yes, I will. And I'm going to do it with the most, absolutely most obscure 80s trivia question ever. Save that till the end. For now, let's look at effect, method, ad copy, and product quality and see how this thing does. And by the way, you know if I'm giving it away, it must be decent, right? Okay, so this is Jonathan Friedman. It's actually volume one of a two-book set. I don't know if the second one's out yet or if he's still writing it or if it was one of those deals where halfway through writing and he's like, crap, there's going to need to be two books because i got so much stuff here. Uh, so I'm going to tell you this. Um, if you want, for free, you can get the first 27 pages of the book. That's, you can link right off of magicreview.com. I put a link there. And you can download a PDF of the first 27 pages, which covers all of the like intro stuff for, like from David Regal and like the preface from from uh, Jonathan Freeman here and um, and then it has the first trick which is called the Wanabi Ninja um, that's what you think it's called until anyway just read it you'll understand what I'm talking about so um, what's so take a look here just to give you a little sense of what's going on these little icons here there's like a pair of vans there some uh, Pac-Man and what is that? A boombox and a, um, oh, a calculator watch. My gosh, you guys remember those? I had one. Um, anyway, a little boy George icon. So there's fun little icons at the end of each chapter. Plenty of '80s references throughout, um, and then even the style of the look. Look at the the uh, pictures here. The you know each trick has sort of a picture. Um, and a very, uh, very 80s layout. Those graphic boxes and stuff. Uh, it totally took me back to, it did, it, forget about the effects and all that for just a minute. Just the idea of, of, of a book from the 80s, it, this totally works. Totally. Um, a lot of the magic books written back then had this style, particularly Paul Harris books. In fact, Paul Harris books really inspired my writing style. And my very first book I ever wrote um, was called Stone Cold Magic. And it had it had very similar sort of feel as far as the layout of the book went. And uh, it, Jonathan Friedman did the same thing here. And I, it's really well done. He does a good job of like... Um, so these things are what you're saying to the um, custom, spectator. I was going to say customer, spectator. Uh, these are what you're saying to the spectator. This is when he's giving you instructions. And then at the end of each chapter, he's got a thing called, oh yeah, where he just has some uh, little post-effect. Uh, in my book, 793.8, I had the same thing. Post-effect palaver is what I called it. Um, but it's the same idea, again, inspired by this sort of 80s style of magic book. So just I just love the way this book looks. Forget the content for a minute. Just I love the way the book looks. But let's look at the content. Effects. First one is the Wanabi Ninja. I just mentioned that. That one you can get for free in that download I was just telling you about. So if you're on YouTube and not actually on magicreviewed.com right now, click on the link down below in the description and it'll take you over to magicreviewed.com and you'll be able to download it. <clears throat> Feats of Strength. Uh, borrowed, broken, and bent. Or bent, then broken key, and then restored and returned back. Um, then there's... The, I'll just tell you a few that stood out as, as ones that I really liked. But again, this isn't about liking or disliking the effects it's about the practicality the methods and so forth but i just want to give you a little bit of a sense of what you're getting um uh current popcorn kernel uh pop a popcorn kernel in your hand and you even hear it pop um georgian abe is a penny and dime uh, a penny and a quarter like two coin transpo that ends with the two coins fused together white light white heat white card is by sean dunn 
So he's got a couple other contributors here. And Sean Dunn, this is like uh, the old Paul Harris and the Ackerman and uh, Overkill effect. And uh, it has um, a really clever way to be able to know what the thought of card was, or thought of number, I should say, that the original Overkill doesn't have. And it's, and it's a very smart idea. And then um, on top of that, it has a, a blank deck finish where the only thought of card is the only card in the deck. Um, Selectigami is a really cool thing where you have a card selected. And then you fold the card and you draw something on the back and you fold the card a certain way and it reveals the selected card. Really cool idea. Um, the spoon melt. A melted plastic spoon. You can actually see this in the trailer, at least the melting part. But then it, you restore it and there's no spoon switch. It's very clever. Um, the um, guitar pick a card. <laughs> All right. I was going to publish this, this following thing in a trick in the future i'm not gonna tell you what the trick is but it uses guitar picks but since he brought this up and if you buy this book i'm going to give you this line for free and it's not that amazing you probably thought of it anyway but just in case know that i that i am the first one to say this <clears throat> and you've we, we've all heard this right where um they say they say to you oh you're a magician um what instrument do you play right <clears throat> and so i thought i would use that in a presentation i thought well, uh, I would say to my audience, especially if somebody in my audience says to me this, that thing I just said, what instrument do you play? But if they don't say it, I would bring it up and say, you know, I get asked all the time, you're a magician, what instrument do you play? Um, and so I, I got tired of hearing that. And so uh, I play the guitar and I would produce a guitar pick. And, uh, and then I'd do a magic routine, which I'm not going to tell you that routine, but I'd do a magic routine with it. So it was a nice inline for a trick, especially if they ask the question themselves. So if you're going to do the guitar, pick a card uh, from his book here, then there's a, an inline for you. Or use his, which is also really good. Uh, and we'll talk more about the lines in a minute. Uh, magic eraser, I, I love that idea of a coin disappears and it absorbs into one of those Mr. Clean magic erasers. Um, and then uh, a key cutter. That's the last trick in the book. And remember, there's 22 tricks. I'm only naming a few. Key cutter is uh, um, a, a blank, like a key that hasn't been cut. It can be examined and everything. And then you light, you make the teeth appear on it. You make it, it cut, and then it can be examined again after the teeth appear. So that's just a handful of the effects. There's a lot more. There's a lot of card stuff, coin stuff. He's got a coin routine that's six phases but it's they're each individual basically moves that you could use anywhere in your coin work so overall my summation of the effects is this they're not just derivatives of of old stuff i mean yeah there's some that's that are updates or his take on a classic plot or whatever but it's not like oh here's his four ace routine and here's his ambitious card routine and, and you know here's his spectator cuts to the aces routine and here's his torn and restore card routine no these are they're different they're unique and they're fun and they're different so i think that uh that's always a plus that that the effects are sort of a little bit new or interesting <clears throat> so uh method the methods are great they're simple for the most part uh, there's only one method that takes a little bit of prep work that but it's not even that bad and it's you only have to do it once out of every five or six performances and that is the key cutter that i just mentioned you will have to do that preparation a few times um or, or you have to do like a one-time thing not a one-time thing it's a five-time thing for how do i say it? you do it once and it lasts you five times and you have to do it again and it lasts you five times okay anyway that's the and that's the hardest thing the, the, the uh, any side of hand that's involved is really simple, straightforward, not complicated stuff. Um, so I think that's, yeah, there's not much to say about the method. It's all solid, doable, legitimate methods. Uh, add copy integrity, also good. What's cool about this, you get to download a sample, like I mentioned, of the book, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You can see the writing style, the layout. If you like it or not, you'll, you'll see one of the tricks. There's also a video trailer which is unusual for books so you can go watch that and you'll see some of the stuff that's in the book <clears throat> so um 
product quality. I showed you a lot of the book. It's very well produced. It's well made. It's print on demand, which is how I did one of my books. And I love it because I can ship a book print on demand anywhere in the world for three or four bucks plus the cost of the book. But so anytime somebody orders a book, I, I can just ship it out and uh, it does. It only costs me a few bucks because they'll print it in Europe if it's an a order in Europe or they'll print it. And I think they have places in uh, in Asia, too. I don't know that for sure. But uh, everywhere I've shipped, it's only cost me like three or four bucks. Uh, anyway, so this is a, a good way to do a book. And it's um, it allows you to keep the price down a little bit so you don't have to uh, have a bunch of carry a bunch of inventory around. And so for 25 bucks, you get 22 effects. It's a pretty sweet deal. Um, there is two a couple product quality issues that I'll, I'll talk about real quick. One is there's a couple places, at least one, there might be more, but there's at least one place where he got his left hand and his right hand mixed up, where the text said that to do this with your right hand, but it should have said left hand. It was, it was um, uh, what's intuitive enough or obvious enough or whatever enough that I knew what he meant. There's also one where the picture shows him holding, doing something with his left hand, but the text says, use your right hand to do whatever, but it's, in the picture, it's your, actually your left hand. But then in the next picture, it goes back to the right hand being the one. It's kind of weird. So I was a little confusing, but I worked it out. But there is one problem that's such a bummer. Jacked Up. Uh, if you're a fan of my work, you'll know I have a trick called Jacked Up. This is not it, and they did not steal this from me at all. Uh, and in fact, they even went with a different pun. There's a little jack jacking the card up. And if you saw mine, the pun is um, a joker getting the crap kicked out of him by a bunch of jacks. He's getting jacked up by the jacks. Anyway, um, so again, there's the similarities in that 80s style where mine had a picture. His has a picture. Um, and uh, anyway, so yeah, sorry about all the plugs for my book. This is about Jonathan here, not me. Um, the problem with this is the trick doesn't work because it's written up wrong um and there's without revealing the method i can't really say much else um but i will give you this one example and this i think is safe to say i'll just use well i have some jacks here there is a place in the routine where you have this situation where it's two of the same card they're actually Jack of Hearts, but I just threw this with diamonds because that's what I had here at handy in my deck, my loose cards. But it would, it would be Jacks of Hearts, Jack of Hearts, whatever, Jacks of Hearts, like this. And then it says to do a Hammond count. And it tells you how to do a Hammond count. It says take the first card over. Um, let me get that out of there. Okay. Sorry, I got these are all mixed backs and different colors and stuff. I apologize. But it says do a Hammond count by taking the first card into your left thumb. Like that, and then take the whole packet into your right thumb crotch, and in the picture it shows a jack right there, and then it says to take this jack back, which is the standard ham and count move, and then that so that so it should look like you get you're counting one, and then this is apparently one card, and you count two, and then you steal that one back, and then it goes over and it's three, and you switch back for the packet again, and that's four. The problem is there's no jack on the face there, so because there isn't then the Hammond count doesn't work because you're supposed to be showing four face-up jack of hearts and, or diamonds in this case. That, and that doesn't work because the, the cards are in the order that he says to put them in, but when you do the Hammond count, it doesn't work at all like that. And so somewhere there's a misstep in the way it was written up, and the problem is you can't get past that step, and so nothing else in the thing works. And it was a bummer because I really liked that effect and I wanted to do it. Now, that's not actually his effect. His effect, that's Jack Cole's effect, I believe. Just verify that. Uh, Joe Cole, sorry, Joe Cole. Uh, so that's Joe Cole's effect. And um, so I imagine, that, you know, if you contacted Joe or Jonathan, maybe they would clear it up or whatever. But that one effect is not doable um, because of the way it's written up. Other than that, I mean, this thing is awesome. So, uh, 4.5 stars, stone status of gem. And so now, whatever shall I do with my extra copy of my book? Well, 
I'm going to give you, like I said, the most obscure 80s trivia question. And it's so obscure that you'll either know it or you won't. Um, and I Googled everything I could think of that somebody who doesn't know it would Google, and it doesn't show up. So um, I'm hoping you guys can't find it through Google. So you either know it or you don't. And if you're one of my younger viewers, I got plenty of viewers. Turns out one of my viewers happens to go to school with my son. I had no idea that, that they were, um, that. so I, I mean, he lives right around the corner from me. So I'm a mini celebrity in my own little hometown. Uh, anyway, so if you have, if you're younger and you don't know, ask your parents and just give them the frame of reference that we're talking about, 80s pop culture. The question is, who is Elvis? And I'll tell you, it's not Elvis Presley. And it's not Elvis Costello. That's all I will tell you. Who is Elvis? If you are a child of the 80s, you, you will either just know it and go, Oh, I know it. I got it. I won. Or you won't know it. And you're going to look everywhere and you'll never find it. So... Um, now the only other thing, if multiple people get it, um, I, I have in the past said, um, well, no, I'm just going to go with the first person to get it. First person to post it only on the YouTube channel in the comments in the YouTube channel. First person to post it. They win the book. That's it. No drawings, no nothing. You just be the first person to post this in the comments. Who is Elvis? I need to replenish my electrolytes. So, you, like the video, subscribe to my channel, listen to the random iTunes song of the moment, which is... How do you like me now? Uh-oh, my light's gonna fall. Don't fall, don't fall. Uh, Toby Keith, how do you like me now? By the way, I dropped a clue in there just a second ago of some information that might help you make the connection of who Elvis is. But I'm not going to tell you what the clue was. Anyway, uh, so How Do You Like Me Now by Toby Keith. Um, what can I say? It's Toby Keith. It's awesome. Too bad it wasn't an 80s tune. That would have rocked. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Tune in tomorrow, day 25, where Jeff will be less rambly, and he will review... Killer prediction by Cody Fisher. Dun, dun, dun. Till then, folks. Peace out.